right? So what we're going to be looking at in this video is a instructional routine that is called number talk images. And in this routine, we are going to be providing students with an image to look at and leading with two simple questions. What do you notice and what do you wonder? We want to give the students a little bit of time to be able to think about this and give us some answers. But then we want to get to the next part, which is how many and how do you see them? So parts of this instructional routine is, or one of the foundations of this is we really want to utilize from students their flexible strategies of figuring out how many, but also be able to make some noticings and wondering about the context of the picture. We want them to be able to mathematize the world that's around them and see that. And that's one of the things that we can do in this routine. So we're going to show the students the image. Then from there, we're going to give them some prompts, right? So that notice and wonder. And then we might wait till a little bit later to ask them how many and how do you see them? And from there, we give them some, some independent thing time. And when the students are ready, one of the things I do recommend, especially for, our, our, for any of our students, is just using thumbs or hand signals to show that they are ready, that they've thought about this and they've got something that they can, that they can share with the class. So then from there, we're going to get the students to share their thinking. So the teacher then is going to guide this discussion and they're going to annotate or they're going to be writing up on the board all of the students' wonderful different flexible ways of thinking about or multiple strategies of solving for the uh, quantity that's on the screen. So as we're moving into this and teachers are, uh, you know, getting the students to share, we're going to dig into the bag of tricks that we have for the teacher moves and just really accept all strategies. So this is one of those moves we want to make sure that all of our students thinking is valued and one of the ways to do this is to also acknowledge students equally. So they're not getting too overly excited about one student's strategy even though they might just hit exactly where you want everybody to go but we don't want to be necessarily getting too excited over one but not as excited over another. Okay. And the last one here is, of course, that annotating, making sure that we're getting that student thinking up on the board so that they fully can see oh, what each person is thinking and so that they can also clarify their thinking with the teacher as well. And this also gives the students an opportunity to connect their thinking with another student's thinking so that we're uh, maximizing or taking advantage of all the knowledge that these students have in the room. So taking a look at this, I want you to take a minute if you want, pause, what do you notice, what do you wonder, what do you think the kids would notice and wonder, and then how many and how do you see them? So if I'm looking at this and I'm giving students independent time and they now we're sharing, uh, this can be utilized in many, many different classrooms. So we could be using this in a grade one classroom because maybe we want to focus on counting by, by fives. Maybe we want to be looking at different groups. Um, or I can start using this in to our, our secondary settings as well, where maybe our students, what they're seeing is they're saying to me, well, I see a, a certain number of groups of five, or they might see an array and they might see five groups of five, and then they see that two are missing. So what we can start to do with this is we can start to drive student thinking and show them how they do understand some of these key concepts, especially around ones that they often struggle with, which is like order of operations. And so they think mathematically naturally about the world that's around them. They're telling me, yeah, I see five groups of five, and there's two missing. So I, I know that. So five groups of five, and I know there's five in each cup. So now they're starting to think about these in, in different ways. So maybe they're saying, um, and two missing. So that's what they're showing me. Well, five groups of five can be represented like this, and I'm gonna represent this mathematically for the students, and minus two. So. Now we're seeing this order of operations more bridging that understanding into their natural ways of thinking. And that's just figuring out how many cups there are. And then they might say, well, then I'm going to multiply that all by five. 
And so really just trying to drive at and get to that student thinking and then be able to represent it in the ways that we want our students thinking to be driven. So here's a second example, and this one can be used in many different classrooms. We want to think again about what do you think students would notice, what do they wonder, and then how many and how do you see them? And again, we can use this in many different classrooms, in our primary classrooms. Maybe we really just want to drive home those groups of 10. And so really thinking about also what are the main concepts that we want to drive or take away from this? Okay, so we want, they don't necessarily have to connect with what we're doing in class at that moment, but it's a great way to drive us into also some of the tasks that we might be doing that day. And in our third example that I'm showing you here, here's a wonderful representation of some different dice. It's very uh, kind of neat to look at, and there's lots of things that students can notice or wonder about this, and we can start extending this beyond just being okay, how many and how do you see it? We could be talking about the, the, the dots on the dice. Well, how many dots in total are there? Okay, that's one of the things. We could look at the number of dice. We could say, well, if we put two more on the edge of this after we've gone through and done how many and how do you see it, we can drive into another uh, conversation about uh, in patterning and and driving students thinking in a, in a certain direction for that lesson that we want that day. So are there, what are the benefits of these routines? Well, with these routines, they get all of our students involved and communicating and talking within the class. They, multi, or they use multiple strategies. They're uh, highly differentiated and allow for all of our students to be engaged within that lesson. There's lots of other benefits that we can see from these, but that's just a few. So the resources that I looked at today can all be found on NLPS Learns underneath Numeracy and Planning Resources. And once you get there, you're gonna to go to the tab on the left-hand side that says Instructional Routines. There's a few other instructional routines that you can check out, and there's questioning and other websites and videos that show you how to use this routine as well. If you have any additional uh, questions that you might have, feel free to contact the learning line and uh, let us know what you're thinking or what questions you might have.